What is this place, Adia? A very good question. I never knew there was such a village on the Eastern Passages Byway. Maja, is that you? Huh? Hmm, I am mistaken. You are much too young, though there is a resemblance. Might I have your name, young one? Adia. Hmm, of course, that explains the resemblance. This is the birthplace of the Lord Marshal and his wife, the Lady Marzer. What's this? I'd never heard of such a place before. Why are there so many graves? Hmm, so you know not of the Great Plague? Well, perhaps it is best that way. Hmm. Yes. Adia, your mother and father were born right here in this village. Though they were five years apart, they were quite close, you know. They lived near each other, and their families got along quite well. It was as if they were brother and sister. At age 18, your father left to enter an elite school in the city of Eternia. He was the great hope of the village, you know. And he did all in his power not to disappoint. He eventually graduated at the head of his class and made a name for himself in the city. It was 21 years ago when your father asked for your mother's hand in marriage. She just 19 and he but 24. So it was they began a new life together in this city of Eternia. It was the following year that the great plague struck our village, wiping out most of the residents. 
yes, perhaps. Hmm, yes, the Great Plague. Twenty years have passed since it first struck. A sickness that began in eastern lands soon spread, wreaking havoc across the world ere it reached our land. It struck the year after your parents were wed and moved to the city, you know. Once the plague took root in Gravemark Village, all roads out of the village were closed. It was on orders from the head temple of the Crystal Orthodoxy, ruler of this land at the time. But I still believe they made the right choice. After all, the city of Eternia was spared the Great Plague's devastation. Millions upon millions across the world lost their lives in a matter of months and I have been tending the graves ever since. Your parents paid us a visit upon the roads reopening, you know. They seemed truly sorry that their hometown had to be forsaken for the good of the city. Uh, yes. Yeah. Hmm. Just as cold as before. as before. Right. And what of Lester, elf born in the land? It seems a struggle between the... Never has a visitor spoken of matters of such import. Tis as if you have been to this castle before. Lord De Rosso! Ah, you know me then. You must be... Yes, I see. And it seems there is much you already know. <laughs> yes. Yes, I see. From the old faith to the orthodox. The meaningless power struggle. You know much. How uncanny. Almost disturbing. Which is perhaps ironic coming from me. 
Lord De Rosa. <laughs> I see. My face has. De Rosso's castle siege. This is and his never-ending sorrow. So, you feel pity for me? Well, I suppose stranger things have happened. Lord De Rosso. The question is, to what extent do you? me and I shall grant life everlasting. Who or what was talking to him and why? Even I know not, just as I know not how you came to know those words. Lord De Rosa. Except me. <laughs> ah, yes. Eternal grief and eternal vengeance. De Rosa. The war that changed the very land we walk upon. <laughs> Care for a taste of my power? The power to fell mountains and tear the earth asunder. Lord De Rosa. Then again, you people might. Well, we would simply have to try it to find out what would happen. No. De Rosso's portrait of the... So, Juliana was responsible for cutting off the vestals and temples from the corrupt orthodoxy. But the description for this portrait only tells of the time he was hatching his plot. Precisely. The actual events therein shall be told in other paintings. Lord De Rosso. Or perhaps you have already. Yes, tis in the realm of possibility for those such as you. Lord 
De Rosa's asterisk painting. There are asterisks in this world, too. It seems the sage here in this world also wanted to reduce the orthodoxy's authority. I've always wondered what they were made of. They have such a warm, bewitching glow. Truth be told, he never shared the secret of their making with me. Really? He kept the secret from you, too? <laughs> the next time we meet, I shall have him explain it to me. I commend you for making it this far. The final painting lies beyond this... You're referring to the angel painting. Precisely. You know much that has yet to happen, my friends. The last test is a test of strength. I shall only reveal the painting. One might also say that there is no need for those. But be forewarned, I... I am a man of my word. Lord De Rosso's angel painting. It's as he said. She looks just like Agnes. You can say that again. Yes, they could be twins. Is there really such a resemblance? Did I speak thus in the previous world? Oh, Lord De Rosso. I don't recall if you truly said that. I seem to recall he did. At least I think. Well, no matter. The truth is, there is a striking resemblance. showed skill making it to our central command, Windbustle. <gasps> but unfortunately... <laughs> I'll have you know I'm in top. I bid you, Victoria. Unleash... I wouldn't have it any other way. yourself at this rate hmm. you finally speak and it's out of concern for me hmm. you need to learn your place sniveling worms
Victor. Silence, if you please. It's happening again. Again? What do you mean? Oh, I was just thinking out loud. Allow me to tell you a story, if I may. Once upon a time, in a place not of this land, her name, though still it, she was taken in and raised by the orthodoxy. This is new? She simply waited upon her inevitable demise, all the while gasping in pain and despair. Then, a chance meeting changed her. On death's door and abandoned, she was found by the Grand Marshal, who wandered the lands after renouncing the orthodoxy himself. He took her to Yoyana, nursed her to health, then brought her to this realm for treatment. My father did this? How can you not know? As his daughter. He never spoke a word of this. Were it not for his lordship, her fragile life would have soon been snuffed out. I was pulled from my studies on the Earth Crystal to... With the help of my father, who studied the amplification of white magic, she survived. But the treatment was not yet perfected, and she was left with terrible side effects. She suffers from periodic fits. Her dread of these fits eventually caused her to lose all control over her emotions. But perhaps the most significant side effect was the cessation of her physical growth. Since my father and I began her treatment here, she has always had the childlike form you see. If she is in such pain, how can you force her to use her powers? <sighs> I do not need you to tell me that. After the death of my father, I took over his research and have poured my heart into healing her body. But I could not relieve her agony. No, each time her tiny form is racked with pain, I ask my... But ever, as long as I drop, she is both my... <laughs> I mean, really, Vic? Forgive me. Back to... Now, let's stop it. What is the point of us fighting? The point, you ask? Hmm. Because you disgust me, idiot. Well, that is reason enough to fight, no. I wish to see your corpse displayed before me.
Look, this shit. That's and. Are you okay? Yes. I need a sh Okay. Thank you. 